Hi everybody, it's Franny, and today we're comparing a 1958 Porsche 356 Cabriolet against a 1969 Volkswagen Beetle Cabriolet. We'll start our tour back here in the engine bay of the 356. The first thing you're greeted with here is the large oil filter canister here. Now this is a partial bypass filter. There's an element inside this canister. 356s also have dual carburetors. In this case, they're Zenith carburetors. A couple of other interesting bits to note is that there are these horns down here, which are kind of interesting. They're designed to blow warm air on the carburetor. So they're like a carb heat system. So if you're coming off the back of a mountain and it's been quite cold and it's getting a little more humid, your carburetors could ice up. And the whole thought on this is that they will blow warm air on the carburetors and keep them from icing up. Always thought that's kind of a neat touch. The throttle linkage on a 356 is a ball joint all the way from the gas pedal all the way back to the carburetor, so that's kind of neat. Uh, the rest of this is all pretty standard sort of flat four air cooled. We've got our large shroud back here. There's a squirrel cage blower on the opposite side of the generator. This is a six volt car. We've got our distributor on the right and fuel pump on the left. So up here on the Upper right up here is our voltage regulator. Another neat feature of this engine is it actually has a third piece bolted to the back of the crankcase. So that's the piece that the generator is mounted on and the distributor and fuel pump are mounted to. Here in the Beetle engine bay, it's a little bit different look. We've got this large oil bath air cleaner because we have a single Solex carburetor in the center here and a large intake manifold that goes out. This is a single port engine. We still have our generator over here on the right. This is a 12 volt unit on this car, which is, that's really nice. Uh, we have our distributor and fuel pump are swapped on this car. So the distributor on the left and fuel pump on the right, no third piece. So the Beetle engines never had a third piece on them. The other thing you also notice are these tubes on the side here. Now this is for the heating system in the car. So it takes air off of the back blower here, bypasses the cooling for the engine and runs it through a set of shrouds over the exhaust system in the back there and then pumps that forward. That's different than the 356. The 356 is using scavenged air over the cooling, actual cooling fins on the engine. A little bit different. That's why you don't see these on a 356. Our accelerator is now a cable on a Beetle and not a ball link system. The whole point of this engine is completely different than the 356. The point is that this engine, look at the size of this engine bay. It's like huge. You can get into it very easily. You can maintain the car easily. It's not highly stressed, so it doesn't wear out as fast and it's easy to work on. The spark plugs are a little bit challenging, but not really that bad. Everyone complains about them, but they, you can get them in and out in about 15 minutes, not a problem. They want things to be easy to work on. They want them to be uh, reliable, and you can go out and start this car. One thing I really, really like about this car, the carburetor has a choke on it. 356 doesn't have any choke, so you have to sit there and sort of crank it, and it, it always runs lean, and you have a little throttle pull hold on the dash, but it's always a little fussy until it warms up. This car has an actual electric activated choke on it. I really like that. That just makes it so much easier for a daily driver. So that's really the big difference between the two engines. So 356 is designed for speed and power. It's a little bit harder to maintain, harder to get into that hole in the back, but uh, the Beetle is designed for longevity and uh, for ease of maintenance. And this is an everyday driver car. So just a little different in the design focus. On the interior in the Beetle, the first thing you notice as you sit in here is your big speedometer here in the center. Has your gas gauge at the top and your turn signals at the bottom. It's all the information you absolutely need right in front of you. They brought the color uh, from the outside of the car in on these little vents here, which is very nice and also on the glove box as well. The rest of the buttons are all easy to get to. Now remember, this car is 11 years after the 356, so things on the 356 are gonna look a little bit different, whereas on a 58 Beetle, they would have been pretty similar. 
as far as switch gears and such go. You got your radio here in the center, it's great. And uh, lights and wipers and things. A very flat windshield on this car. Easy to replace and not a very expensive piece, which is nice. This car's cabriolet, obviously, so the uh, rear view is a little bit different than on the coupes, but you still have your uh, courtesy light up here. Steering wheel is nice and big. Now, obviously, these cars did not have power steering, so they have a pretty big steering wheel. Pedals are where they need to be, just on the floor there with a nice spacing, exactly the way they should be. Uh, I love that they're all hinged on the floor. That's always a favorite of mine. The gear shift right here is in a good spot, although I'd say it's a little bit short. I would like to see it up maybe a little bit higher. I find that I'm always kind of reaching down for it. Your parking brake in between the two seats, that's pretty standard fare on these cars. And uh, your heater controls in between the two seats. So the interior on this car may seem a little bit stark, but it's very useful. It's very utilitarian and easy to live with for a daily driver. Here in the 356, the first thing I think that you'd notice is just a little, maybe a little higher trim level. The front seats are, are leather. We have leather on the dash as well. This was standard for a cabriolet. We have a, a beautiful steering wheel, maybe a little more detail in the design here and a beautiful horn ring on the car. In front of you are three gauges, not just the singular gauge that you see in the Beetle. Uh, you see a rev counter right in front of you, speedometer on the right, and then this is sort of a general gauge uh, over here, oil temperature and your fuel. So they've sort of split things up a little bit. Um, we got a nice radio here, and this is 1958, and it's an AM, FM, and then a marine band, which is kind of nice to get weather back in the day. Our ignition switch is, of course, on the left, a la Porsche. That's very Porsche E. But one thing I really like is that the gear shift lever has a bend in it and it's it's also a little bit higher relative to the seat. So you're not reaching down for it. It's just in a little better ergonomic position than it is on the Beetle. Our knob up here is for heat, which is actually fairly inconvenient. You have to reach down, find that thing, and you have to spin it a bunch of times in order to turn on the heat. The Beetle is much easier with its two pulls um, on each side of the parking brake. Speaking of the parking brake, where is that? Well, on a 356, it's up under the dash on the hopper left side here. So that's completely different as well. Other than that, we have a little smaller hump. We're gonna get to the structural differences between the car, but that's the reason for the smaller hump. Pedals are right where they need to be. They're fairly similar to where they are in the Beetle, but you don't see a lot of the mechanisms. They have a nice cover over the back of it there. And just the general trim level, just nicer. Uh, Porsche brought the external color into the inside of the car on the dash here, which is really, really a nice touch. The cabriolets have this red in here as well, which this red is to match the seats, which is kind of neat. Just a lot of that sort of thing back and forth. We have a curved windshield instead of a straight windshield for aerodynamics and also for a little better visibility as well. So um, the car's a little bit lower but it's still not difficult to get in and out of, I don't think. The seats are a little bit larger, a little bit um, more comfortable, I would say, and they have a little bit, just a little bit of bolstering. They're not quite as flat as they are in the Beetle. Um, so I think I, I really like these. They have, they have chrome trim here on the sides here. So uh, just a little higher trim level all around. A major difference between the two cars is the way they're constructed. So look at this, the Beetle door is out almost 90 degrees here. That's to help with ease of egress so you can get in and out of the car easily. The 356 stops about here. But the most important thing about it is, take a look at the thickness difference between these two doors. The 356 is quite a bit thicker than the Beetle is. And this speaks to the design difference between the two cars. So the, the 356 is built on a subframe. There's this, all this metal all welded together into this small subframe and the running gear is attached to that and the engine is mounted to that. And then this body is laid over on top of it in different pieces and welded in place. So once it's in, it's in and the rounded beautiful shape of this car shows up in the doors here. For the Beetle, it's a very different story. 
that's made from a flat pan where the running gear is all bolted to it and the engine is bolted to the back of that but the body is dropped on top of it and bolted in all the way around so this modular design on the beetle is designed specifically to make the car easy to work on you if you have a, a fender bender and you can't get your fender all dinked up it's easy enough to unbolt that fender, go buy a new one, get it painted, and put it on your car. With the 356, oh my, so that means that the whole part has to be cut off, that clip has to be taken off, and literally cut off the car. You have to get a new clip, you then have to weld it all in place, and you have to reshape it. It's a huge pain to do any type of body work on a 356. But the reason they did this was because the 356, they wanted a very aerodynamic shape. They just wanted it to be as light as possible. And the 356 is actually about nine inches lower than the Beetle is to give it a much lower center of gravity. So that makes for a very different structure between the two cars. With the hubcap off the front wheel, we can see the brakes behind here. Now this drum goes all the way out. You can see it here in the slots. It's huge this thing and made out of aluminum. Porsche even cut back the steel of the wheels quite a bit in order to reduce mass. Now we have a five bolt pattern on the wheel which is great um, but the whole concept here is to reduce the unsprung mass and also the rolling mass but still allow for quite a bit of cooling in the brakes. So these brakes are going to have quite a bit less fade and they're just huge for this car. On the Beetle, we have a four bolt pattern, not a five bolt pattern, and our brakes are quite a bit smaller and the drums themselves are made out of steel. Well, that's a lot of the static differences between the two cars. Let's take them out for a short drive. Well, I'm very excited to drive the Beetle for a couple of reasons. One, I've never driven a Beetle Cabriolet before. So that's really fun. And the second thing is that I just replaced the shocks in this car, all four of them. And up front, the car had really stiff air shocks in it. It was very bangy. And I can already tell the ride is much better. So I'm very happy with that. So the car is still a little cold, but it pulls away, accelerates nicely, very smooth. Always love that about Beetles. And being just a four speed, you know, you've got these really tall gears to push against. The brakes on the car are not as responsive, I'd say, as the Porsche. But they stop the car just fine, I think. Now, as far as visibility goes, with the top down, it's pretty good, except I can't see very much behind me at all. One thing I really love about the Beatles is that tweet. It's just a great sound. I love that. It's unlike any other car or any other engine I've ever heard. One thing I really like about it is that it gives you sort of an audible uh, indication as to whether you're actually on it or not. So the minute you get on it, it tweets, and the minute you let off, it stops. And that's kind of cool. One thing, now it's quite windy out today, one thing about these cars, they're only 1,800 pounds. So since they're so light, they do get kind of pushed around the road a little bit. The 356 is no exception. Goes around corners just fine. Although I don't feel a lot of precision in the suspension or the steering. As a convertible, it's actually quite nice. I expected it to be quite a bit windier in here and it's actually not bad at all. And like I said, it's pretty breezy out today. Actually, corner is very flat. It feels great, it really does. The engine has adequate power. It's not crazy fast, but when you push down on the accelerator, it starts to accelerate, which is great. I think zero to 60 on these cars is past 15 seconds, actually. But uh, um, that's, just, that's just the way it is with Beetles. 
Okay, well we have quite a hill here, so we'll see how it does up the hill. So climbing up this hill, and I know what this is like in the 356, we're in fourth gear, and it's a pretty good grade, but we're slowing down. So I'm probably going to have to downshift to third here. Now I'm double clutching my downshifts just to be careful with this transmission. I don't know it well, I know it's old. So in third gear, I'm floored up this hill. It's holding its own. Doesn't feel like it's really accelerating. It's a pretty steep hill. And we're at 6,000 feet, so that's another thing. But it's not unusual in a Beetle to be driving around with your foot planted solid to the wall. It's not that unusual. That I do remember. As far as when to shift on this car, you kind of feel it. The engine will sort of plateau. It gets to a point, it just doesn't feel like it's going to push any further. There's no point. Shift then or before, but but uh, there's no point in pushing it anymore. It's not going to go anywhere. And as a convertible, it actually does really well. It wasn't that windy at all. It's, uh, it's very comfortable. Well, now that I've had this wonderful opportunity to drive a convertible Beetle, let's hop in the 356 and see how it compares. Here in the 356, first impressions, we're definitely sitting a little bit lower. We don't feel quite as up on a pedestal as we do in the Beetle. This particular car is a little bit quieter over the bumps and things than the Beetle was. The steering definitely feels a bit tighter. Everything feels a bit more direct. Notice we don't hear the tweet back there either. It's a completely different exhaust system. shifts are nice and smooth in this car. Now the ride on this car. So I have kind of softest shocks on this car just because our roads are so horrible but boy the ride is just sublime. It's absolutely wonderful. I would say that of all the cars in the garage this is my favorite ride. The engine is immediate. You can hear that as I uh, double clutch slowly the downshift. It just rev matching is very easy in this car and the pedals are really well set up I think for uh, heel towing and double clutching. throws are pretty long on this car so as you move from gear to gear you've got quite a bit of movement there and that's good because the transmission really doesn't want you shifting any faster anyways it's similar to the Beetle that way the the uh, the case on the transmission is the same as the Beetle case but the internals are all different and it just the synchros just really feel good on this car the Beetle actually feels like it has a little bit of a shorter throw to be honest um, but it's less, it's, it's, it's less defined when you're moving from gear to gear. This engine doesn't feel like it has that flat spot that most Beetles I've ever driven feel like. When they just get to a certain point, they just plateau. This one continues to drive through the RPM range. So that's a little bit different. The engine is more responsive. The car feels lighter and more nimble than the Beetle does. The Beetle just feels like it weighs a ton, actually, even though it really doesn't. 
Here we go, through the gears. Now I do have to say I'm more comfortable in this car. The Beetle isn't mine, uh, but we've had this car for years, and so I know its limits a little bit better. I know that I can push it. This one's a little louder, certainly. And there's more wind noise and more wind with the top down than there was in the Beetle. It feels flatter going around the corners. It feels more eager, like it really wants to uh, just kind of start carving up canyon roads. Loves that. The brakes are more responsive, I'd say. In the Beetle, you press on them and you kind of have to wait. And that's 60. It's not particularly super duper fast and we're also at 6,000 feet. Um, but it's probably half again as fast as the Beetle is. It's a 1600, 60 horsepower engine with about 80 foot-pounds of torque, so that kind of makes sense. The 356 is more expensive to maintain. Parts are way, way more expensive for this car than they are for the Beetle. Uh, I was looking at parts last night as I was going through the braking system. So just, just as an example, the brake drum on this car, I showed you the big, huge brake drum, that's like $2,200 if you have to replace it. I found uh, Beetle brake drums, front brake drums, for like $45. That's crazy. The amount of, the, the, the money difference is huge. These cars were very expensive. Uh, they were about $6,000 when they were new. They were more expensive than a Cadillac. Whereas my mom would always say about the Beetle that it was cheaper than steak per pound. And she's right. They weren't that expensive. Well, they made a zillion of them. And uh, it's wonderful that they're even still around. But that's a testament to both of these cars, I think. And I said that in the last video, is that this car and the Beetle are well taken care of. And people don't take care of care cars that they don't like. They take care of cars that are special, and that's exactly what this is. <laughs> I love that. So the two cars are very different. They were built to completely different design philosophies for, and built for very different reasons. But the wonderful thing about both of them is how well they achieved those goals. You know, that the, the Beetle, designed to be the people's car, to be reliable, to be uncomplicated, to get you from point A to point B without any fuss and to work perfectly. That's the Beetle's vibe and it does a great job. And with this car, you want to take that one step further. Add great handling, a little more responsive engine, um, and better chassis and a lower center of gravity and it does this up the hill it's wonderful now i love the sound of this engine i told you i really like the tweet of the beetle but of all fours there's lots of cars that have four cylinder engines this four sounds great i'm not a huge fan of the sound of four cylinder engines i think they just they're a little flat to me but this one sounds great best sounding four I think I think I've ever heard it's loud, it's thundering back there well I hope you enjoyed our little compare of a Porsche 356 and a Volkswagen Beetle they're very different cars let me know what your feelings are about the two cars what conclusions do you feel so thank you so so much for watching till next time safe travels bye